Obviously, we all know a bit about North Korea, but I personally don't know exactly too much about North Korea, like the actual country itself. This is going to be a really interesting video. Yeah, let's check out North Korea, man. What's the biggest difference between North and South Korea? Well, for one, I'd say watch their news broadcasts and take note on how they talk about their leaders. As opposed to... Is that word for word? Is that good? <laughs> yeah, that and I think they have like this thing going on with conflict and something about a war, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. We have reached our next set of twin countries. The first was the Congos, the last will be the Sudans. But for now, we have reached the Koreas. Cool. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you may have heard something about North Korea in the past decade, as it's been in the news quite a bit. As you know, I'm half Korean with roots in South Korea, and not only that, but I'm also American. So basically, I'm the worst possible candidate in the eyes of a North Korean to speak about their country. I will try to remain <laughs> as unbiased and neutral in my delivery, addressing as much information as okay, objectively cool. as possible, based off of pure data and facts. Kureso, Chungbi the Snika, Kurum, Sija. This is gonna be a good episode. Really work my Korean. I'm an embarrassment. Anyway, North Korea is sometimes referred to as the Hermit Kingdom, so there's always like a sense of mystery when it comes to what's inside. Fortunately, we have satellites and Google Earth. First of all, North Korea is located on the Korean Peninsula, connected to China's Liaoning and Jilin provinces, sandwiched between. You know how they say like North Korea is closed off and stuff, but I'm pretty sure I've seen videos of like tourists going to North Korea. They're allowed in, but like, I'm sure they're like escorted by people, right? They're all escorted by people. They can only go to certain places because like there was like those shops that was fake. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section below what North Korea is like and if um, you're allowed in it or not. Between the Korea Bay and this sea, which be careful what you call it, Koreans and Chinese prefer the name East Sea, whereas the Japanese call it the Sea of Japan. Keep in mind, there's also an incredibly short 17 kilometer long border with Russia at the tri point with China. Along the border with Russia lies the Friendship Bridge, and only North Koreans and Russians are allowed Aww. to take it. With a transfer in Vladivostok wait, wait, what? lies the Friendship Bridge, and only North Koreans and Russians are allowed to take it. With okay. a transfer in Vladivostok, this means you could essentially go all the way to Moscow, making it one of the longest train itineraries in the world at around nine days upon arrival. The same deal exists with China, Holy in which shit. there are three main border crossings, the Sino-Korean Friendship Bridge, the Jian Yalu River Railway, and the New Yalu River Bridge. Each of these bridges, though, are guarded and only let in certain government-approved arrivals that have no set schedule. The country right. is divided into three types of administrative divisions, the nine provinces, the Tukbyoshi, or special city of Ranson, as well as the capital Pyongyang, which also acts in its own entity. Pyongyang has the only international airport, Pyongyang Sunan International Airport, whereas the second largest city, Hamhung, and the third largest, Chongjin, both on the East Coast also have respectively the next largest domestic airports. Now we reach the most controversial part. Wait, they got the airports, right? I, I don't know. I, I feel like I've been told lies about North Korea. But they're not, they're not allowed to leave the country, right? Because I'm pretty sure I've heard like people that escape North Korea. So they got the airports so they're just not in use. The border with South Korea, literally like their own brothers. This 250 kilometer long border, known as the DMZ or Demilitarized Zone, also sometimes called- I feel like I've been told lies. This line was established by the Korean Armistice Agreement to serve as a buffer zone between the two nations, giving more than a little half of the peninsula to North Korea. This means that essentially both countries claim that they are the rightful owners of the entire peninsula, or at least their government ruling systems should be the dominant ruling ideologies. At Panmunjom lies the Joint Security Area, which acts as like the only connection between North and South Korea, with neutral conference rooms. It's actually kind of like a tourist spot in which people are allowed to go in under the supervision of a military guard. On top of that, it's cool. estimated that the country has about 8,000 to 15,000 hidden underground facilities, including underground factories, underground hangars that cut through mountains, naval ports, and artillery pieces in caves. North Korea, as we will soon find out, has quite a unique layout based heavily off of politics. Here you will find symbolism and imagery that relates to the government everywhere, even in the middle of remote yeah. farm villages. Every school and office building is required to have portraits of the late Kim Jong-il <laughs> and Kim Il-sung on their walls. In Pyongyang, when they're not driving, they usually take the amazingly... Imp imagine, imagine, right? Look. <laughs> In the UK, you go into school and you just see Boris Johnson's face everywhere, dude. <laughs> underground metro system, which goes as far as 110 meters below the surface. Most foreigners that visit rarely get to see anything outside of Pyongyang. If you score a deal with the government, you might be allowed to visit Chongjin or the beaches of Wansan or the industrial city of Hamhung. Oh, and keep in mind, since 2015, they've actually started using their own time zone, UTC huh? plus 830, which makes them 30 minutes behind South Korea and Japan. Why did they do that? Uh, because North Korea, that's why. Otherwise, this is the 
part where I usually mention places of interest and honestly, out of my research, almost all of them were located in Pyongyang, such as the Korean People's Study House, the Ark of Triumph, Juche Tower, Cholima Statue, nice buildings. Victoria's Fatherland War Museum, Manyongde Funfair Amusement Park, Kumsusan Memorial Park, wow. Victoria's Fatherland War Museum, Manyongde Fun... Fun fair part, that <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this does not look fun at all. Fun fair amusement park, Just depressing. Kung Su Memorial Palace, Kyungi Jang Stadium, the largest in the world. That looks the sick. Building, Ryugyong Hotel, the ideals of North Korean workers' party cool. monument. Otherwise, outside of Pyongyang and Myohyang San, you have the Friendship cool Exhibition building Hall. Again. In general, North Korea is quite different from most places you'll encounter due to the regime honoring architecture and monuments. Aside from all that, though, the actual landscape has a few colorful sights to offer, which brings us to. Now, believe it or not, if you wow. ever get the chance to see the landscape of rural North Korea, it will not disappoint you. First of all, wow. North Korea is about 80% mountainous, with the largest ranges in the northeast being the Hamgyong and Namnim Mountains. Bro, I'm dying to know, like, if you can go and visit North Korea. Like, I don't want to do it, but I just want to know. Chains. Now, I'm sure you guys will be able to let me know in the comments. Side, got the most treasured natural landmark, the highest peak on the entire Korean peninsula, Mount Pekdu. Well, part of it. China kind of got three quarters of it. Mount Pekdu, with its caldera lake, known as Heaven Lake, is actually an active volcano wow. with the last eruption happening in 1903, and it's considered a sacred spot to all Koreans. To the west of Pekdu is the longest river that divides the border with China, the Amnok, or Yalu River, which empties into the Bay of Korea. Nonetheless, the Taedong River is probably the most important one as it flows directly through Pyongyang. About 70% of the country is forested, about 20% is arable for farming which employs about a quarter of the entire population holy Virtually shit every single crop field is under government jurisdiction as farmers must hand over a portion or quarter to the state during the 90s widespread flooding disasters caused famine which killed off hundreds of thousands of people and since then north korea has actually decided to quadruple their potato production in many places replacing rice since potatoes grow much faster and easier speaking of which i would argue that if you really want a taste of deep true non-commercialized traditional korean cuisine then the north koreans probably have it a little bit more locked down better than south korea i'm sorry south korea but it's kind of true i mean come on since when the hell was cheese ramyun a thing? And even though it <laughs> do taste kind of good, kimchi was never originally into Wait, wait, wait. I mean, is that just a cheese? <laughs> Since when the hell was what cheese ramen a thing? And even though, admittedly, they do taste kind of good, kimchi was never originally Ooh. intended to be made into a burger patty. Anyway, a that traditional good, Korean though. meal will usually consist of multiple banchan, Whatever which are that small was. seasoned side dishes placed in small dishes and bowls alongside your main plate. Typical dishes I'm sure many of you have already heard of, like bulgogi, kalbi, samgyeopsal, buchinge, bibimbap, are made in restaurants, sometimes in the homes of the elite. However, most people in North Korea don't actually eat meat that much, except on public holidays or on special occasions, due really? to lack of access. North Koreans are also known for having the best Right, I'm here. I'm hearing a lot of like lack of access. They have to do their own shit. So like, I don't know if what I've been told about North Korea because I, I haven't done that much research on North Korea at all. I've just like seen bits and bobs from the news and stuff. But um, do do they have? I, I'm I'm gathering that like they don't really get much trade because he's saying they got lack of access to meat. So like, what countries trade with them? Do they not really trade with many countries? And um. Uh, I've, I've, I'm dying to know if you can just like, if I, can I get a ticket and go to see North Korea? Like, what will happen? Like, what's the proceeding with that? My favorite food in the world, nengmyeon, ice cold starchy buckwheat noodles, typically served with a half boiled egg, thin slices of brisket, cucumber radishes, topped off with the right amount of vinegar and Korean spicy mustard. If I could go to North Korea just to try their nengmyeon, I would. Watch, I'm at customs at the airport and they're like, purpose of visit, nengmyeon. Yeah, it's probably not gonna happen. Yo, Dennis Rodman, <laughs> I need you to do me a favor. You need a really good reason. Petroleum is imported from China from a pipeline originating in Dadong along the border, and I. I think that's a good transition to start discussing the people and how and why they are the way they are. Right. And that will be discussed too. Now, let's be honest, when you hear North Korea, immediately images of the Kim regime and marching soldiers, yeah. military yeah. personnel. But for a couple minutes, try as hard as you can to put shops. that aside and go deeper to a level that most people in the Western world don't really tap into. What is North Korea like outside of the news? Well, first of all, the country has about 25 million people and has the most active troops per population at 48 per thousand people. With the exception of a very small group of Chinese, Japanese, and Westerners that have residency status, the country is almost completely homogenous at 99.99 point that's that's got to be the highest right that's got to be the highest 
a percentage of the people in the country from the country. 99% ethnically Korean. Surely. That was the easiest pie chart I've ever made. In addition, they also <laughs> use North Korean won as their currency, even though foreigners can't use it. They use a Type C plug outlet and they drive on the right side of the road. Let's quickly talk about the few non North Koreans that are allowed to live in North Korea. The only real group of ethnic minorities that have inhabited the peninsula prior to war times would be the Chegasun people, descendants of Manchurian lay monks from China that got married and settled in the area. Otherwise, modern Chinese people known as Hua Chao have been able to establish residencies. North Korea. However, since the 80s, more have repatriated back to China. Otherwise, a very small community of only a couple hundred Indians, Japanese, and yes, even about 200 Americans live in North Korea. Some of them are what? prisoners of war, some are defectors, but most of these people are serving in humanitarian sectors, providing things like medical and educational aid. The country has virtually right, cool. no standardized immigration policy other than, will the president allow you in? Which is how these two people got in. Remember the Equatorial Guinea episode? We talked about the dictator Francisco Macias? Well, he made a deal with Kim Il-sung and sent his kids to North Korea shortly before he was assassinated. Yeah, his daughter, Monique was raised alongside the regime, personally meeting Kim multiple times. She speaks fluent Korean and is alive today. She wrote a book and does speaking tours. Then you have oh this God. guy who goes by his Korean name, Cho Sun Il. He's the only Westerner to officially work for the regime. It took him over 10 years to gain the confidence of the government. He is head of the Korean Friendship Association and is North Korea's unofficial ambassador to the world. What's even more interesting are the North Koreans living abroad. Today, there's a community of North Korean descended people in Japan known as the Zainichi Koreans. They have their own pro Pyongyang operated schools and teach lessons in Korean with a strong pro-North Korean curriculum in Japan. Weird, huh? Also, there's estimated to be a little more than 20,000 defectors living in South Korea. And there are quite a few living in the US as well. Remember that letter I got on Flag Friday? In North Korea, they speak, of course, Korean, but a distinct North Korean dialect, which is actually more kind of like a proper- Man, this is so speaking. interesting. Whereas the Korean spoken in South Korea utilizes a plethora of loan words from English and to some extent Chinese. For example, in South Korea, juice is juice. In North Korea, Kualdanmul, which translates to something like fruit sweet water. In South Korea, ice cream. In North Korea, orom kwaja, which means something like ice sweet tree. It's kind of like how Icelandic and Faroese are closer to ancient Norse than Danish, Swedish, and Norwegian. Now, being a North Korean in North Korea is very different from being a citizen of most other places on earth. First thing you have to know is chuche. This word describes the ideology of North Korea started by its founder, Kim Il-sung. Chuche translates to something along the lines of self-reliance. What's interesting is that North Korea even goes by the juche year, not the Gregorian calendar. Calendar. All the years start on Kim Il-sung's birthday, April 15th, 1912, making 2018 the year 106 for them. All resources follow the Sungun Chongji policy, of which gives ration does. priority to the military. They have the largest military budget per GDP in the world at nearly 23%. Both wow. men and women are required to serve conscription, and with 1.2 million active, this makes North Korea the country with the fourth largest military after China the 1.2 million active? Is is North Korea the largest percentage, like percent ratio of like active troops? To their population. US and India. In elementary school, children are taught almost immediately that the enemy is the West and specifically the USA. One of their favorite cartoons being Squirrel and Hedgehog. Anthropomorphic depictions of North Koreans versus the Japanese weasels, South Korean mice, and the American wolves. And don't forget good old Russia bear that the squirrels used to depend on for help as an ally, but he got too drunk and so they dropped him. Now I'm pretty sure you're all aware of how much restriction there is in North Korea on everyday yeah. commodities that we in the West are accustomed to, like YouTube. A list of things restricted in North Korea include overly provocative clothes. Wait, 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 I did not allow you, wait, so no one from North Korea will be, yeah, so I thought this, right, I actually thought this, that they're, they're locked off from the rest of the world, because I'm pretty sure I've seen something where Kim Jong-un said they won the Olympics or something, and they threw like a party for winning the, I don't know, so some shit like that, so no one from North Korea, if you live in North Korea, it's going to be watching it. That's crazy, man, isn't it? That's actually... Clothing. Any website outside of North Korea's Kwangmyung internet service. Yeah. Movies and music from the outside. Coca-Cola. Anything related to... Why Coke? LGBT. International travel, unless you are a high-ranked official with permission from the government. Domestic travel between cities. Okay, there we travel, go. Unless you are a high-ranked official there with we the go. clothing. Any... I don't know how YouTubers have got into North Korea before. But unless you're, the, the, it was probably set up from their government to like make sure, like to just make, uh, make it to the outside look normal, right? That's why they had like people escorting them. That's why they had, they had like the fake shops and shit. Website outside of North Korea's Kwangmyung internet. But you're not allowed in. Movies and music from the outside. Coca-Cola. Pretty much everything. Related to or being LGBT. International travel. Wow. Unless you are a high-ranked official with permission from the government. Domestic travel between cities unless you have a permit. Magazines. What? Hair dye. Or a haircut that does not fit one of the 28 approved styles for men and women. What? Any kind of religious literature. They did just legalize certain cell phones though. Progress.
Speaking of which, North Korea is essentially an enforced atheistic state, although some would argue that it's more like a person reverence state. Although the constitution says it allows religious freedom, religion is heavily restricted and chastised. Anyone owning a piece of religious literature, proselytizing, or worshipping anywhere outside of the government sanctioned and heavily monitored churches will be punished severely. Numbers are hard to come by since the Christian community is heavily concealed and underground, but studies show that there could be anywhere between 300,000 to half a million Christians residing in North Korea to this day. North Korea is a very elitist run country. The top and most privileged people live in Pyongyang. Most people that live in the city are expected to excel in all fields of academia and the arts. Most people there play at least one instrument and have some kind of skill that can attribute to the furtherance of North Korea's cultural identity. Right. And if the government feels like it, they will hold the Arirang Mass Games, the largest of its kind according to the Guinness Book of World Records. Here students as young as five from one of the top eight elite schools of Pyongyang participate in an extravagant colorful performance of exquisitely choreographed acrobatics, that arts, is dance, good. and music with an amazing card mosaic wall literally controlled by individual students flipping colored panels, creating a massive moving image. It's like a living TV and each pixel is Oh my is god. Person. Okay, history time. If we really want to go back fuck? and discuss the entire history of the Korean Peninsula, it kind of goes like this. Jelmun and Mumun pottery period, Korean Neolithic period, Korean Bronze Age, Korean Iron Age, First Kingdom of Gojoseon was founded along with the Jin State, the Proto Three Kingdoms period, the actual Three Kingdoms period of Goguryeo, Baekje and Shila, Shila and Balhae split up, the latter Three Kingdoms, United Dynastic period of Goryeo, Joseon and Korean Empire, World War II Japanese occupation, there's a weird provisional government thing hosted in China, and then this is where things get complicated. Basically, Russia and China supported the North and the US and the UN with its allies for the South. The Korean War, or as the North Koreans call it, the Victorious Fatherland Liberation War, was essentially a war caused by political ideology. Basically, there are arguments on who exactly shot the first fire, but what we do know is that on Sunday, June 25th, 1950, North Korea's Korean People's Army crossed the 38th parallel behind artillery fire, and in three months pushed South Korean and American forces all the way down to Pusan, oh my then the God. US and UN forces forces retaliated, they pushed the North Koreans all the way back up with a vicious counterattack. Finally, there was a stalemate and armistice in 1954, and the DMZ was set up officially separating the two Koreas. Today, North Korea is Holy in shit. an interesting situation. If you talk to a North Korean, they will tell you, yes, anyone disrespecting leaders will be punished. Which brings us to Kim Jong-un. I feel like we kind of have to do a flowchart like we did in the Columbia episode. Can we do that, Ken? Sure. It all started with this guy, Kim Il-sung, father of North Korea. Kim Il-sung had six children from two wives. His oldest son, Kim Jong-il, took over after him when he passed away in 1994. The country wept. Kim Jong-il was known for being the man that essentially, against UN policies, made North Korea a nuclear state by supposedly developing nuclear warheads. He died in 2011. The country wept again. He had six children from three different women. The oldest son was supposed to inherit the nation, but apparently Kim Jong-nam was considered an embarrassment and he lived in exile. The next oldest son, Kim Jong-chul, was deemed as not fit for the job. So that left the youngest son, Kim Jong-un, to take over the throne. Kim Jong-un was brought to power after his father's death, and in 2013, Kim Jong-un executed his aunt's husband under grounds of alleged corruption and yeah, that was all over the news, wasn't it? I remember that. Was it in the airport? As not Fucking for crazy. The job. So that left the youngest son, Kim Jong-un, to take over the throne. Kim Jong-un was brought to power after his father's death, and in 2013, Kim Jong-un executed his aunt's husband under grounds of alleged corruption and treason. His half-brother, Kim Jong-nam, was assassinated in Kuala Lumpur. Details are still a little sh Oh, wait, no, 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 no. No, not this guy. Like, I was getting it mixed up. This guy was assassinated. One of the guys was assassinated in the airport. And treason. His half brother Kim Jong Nam was assassinated in Kuala Lumpur. Details are still. Yeah, okay, he then this guy. His father's work by doing a series of missile tests on Mount Mantop. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on in North Korean politics, and it only gets more interesting when we talk about their relationship to the outside world. Let's cover that now. North Korea is known for being oh, one of the most isolated many? nations on Earth. However, they do actually have diplomatic missions with outside states. First of all, North Korea has made kind of interesting business ties with various African nations. They are known for being the creators of various statues like the ones in Zimbabwe, Namibia, Mozambique. Even the also a resistant monument, the largest statue in Africa. Generally, they seem to have ties with nations that also That's have ties to communism or are still under communist governments. In the past, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam were pretty close allies. However, in the past, these states have adopted a more capitalistic substructure in their legislation legislations, which has distanced them from North Korea over the years. Right. You would think that the USA and UK would have bad ties, but surprisingly, the UK has an embassy in North Korea. North Korea actually does have third-party agreements under the table that allows private investors to do business with them. Whenever oh, North boy. Korea says they're closing off to the Americans, there's always kind of like a small loophole that they kind of let slide, and by that, I mean Dennis Rodman. North Korea <laughs> might say that their best friends would kind of technically be China and Russia. However, China and Russia are a little weary of hanging out with them. Both countries are their largest suppliers of import and export, as well as outside 
communication, even though that is right. very restricted as well. When it comes to South Korea, though, the North has kind of like a strange I love you, but I hate everything you stand for type of relationship. These two are basically identical twins, separated at birth, raised by incredibly different foster parents. North Koreans kind of view South Koreans as American puppets that condone Western imperialist ideologies. Basically, the narrative for the North Koreans is withdraw your ties and sanctions to the Americans and we can reunify, whereas the South is like get rid of Kim Jong-un and join our system and then we can unify. <laughs> In conclusion, yes, North Korea has quite a reputation around the world for being a mysterious, isolated it nation, does. enigma brimming with controversy and conflict, but they also have a unique story that tells us how ideology can play one of, if not one of the most important roles on how we people will live on the planet. I don't know what the future will hold for North Korea and South Korea, but let's hope that somehow, some way, peace can be the final result. Stay tuned! Twin really good video. South Korea is coming up next, and my mom will be in it! <laughs> <laughs> really, really, really good video. Really interesting. Questions that I had during the video, if you guys can ask in the comment section, I really appreciate that. North Korea is just so mysterious. I kind of want to watch more videos on North Korea now, I'm not going to lie. But yeah, enjoy that one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it too. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.